can be confusing. And our favorite players, they just seem to like move around the neck effortlessly, but what you don't see is all the effort that they put in before they got to that point. We all have to overcome the fretboard maze, and fortunately there are a few things that you can practice that will really help give you the freedom to play all over the neck with confidence. In this lesson, I'll show you the most efficient strategy that I know of to help you build your confidence on the fretboard so that you can play in any key confidently. Hit those right notes while you jam. Hey, John here with your Tuesday Blues where it's all about helping you play guitar better so that you can play the music you love. And as any guitarist will tell you, navigating and learning the fretboard is one of the biggest obstacles in the way. So let's tackle that. We're talking arpeggios, more than just a super fun word to say. Think of an arpeggio as a broken chord. It's really just the notes of a chord just played individually, melodically, versus together and harmonically. All right. Now there are as many types of arpeggios as there are chords. There's an arpeggio for a major chord, a minor chord, major seventh, minor seventh, a bluesy dominant seventh, and whatever this chord is. But we're gonna focus on the most useful arpeggio for a blues player, the dominant seventh chord. That thing that sounds like this. Now, music theory warning, we're gonna breeze through a bit of music theory here. And if you need a little help, I'll show some links along the way if you wanna go deeper. But if you're not into music theory, then just know this, the match the arpeggio with the chord that's being played. A dominant seventh chord is made up of the root, major third, perfect fifth, and flat seventh interval. If you need help with this, then check out some resources I've got for you linked with this video. But let's take C as an example and build a dominant seventh chord. We're going to start with the root, C, and then we find the major third, and that's just counting up the scale, just going up from C to D, that's the second, so the third is E. All right, so we can play that here, kind of stay in position, and then the perfect fifth, if we keep going, counting up, we skip the fourth, and which is F, and we're at G, the perfect fifth. So we can play that open third string for a G here in standard tuning. So we've got C, E, G. Pretty cool. That's our major triad. You've got that C major sound happening there, but we're going to make it bluesy by adding that fourth layer on it, which is the flat seventh. And if you keep counting around the scale, just moving up, we've got C, D, E, F, G, A, and then B would be the seventh on our way to the octave, uh, C again, but we want to flatten that. So we've got a B flat in there, all right? And you can play these four notes and you've got your arpeggio. These are the four notes that make up the C7 chord, right? We can play this in this position, common C7 position. Perhaps you're familiar with this one as well. Or the bar chord version up here around the eighth fret. No matter how you play it, it consists of those four notes. That's the chord. We're gonna focus on the arpeggio here by playing the notes separately, all right? So check out this C7 arpeggio. So I played that in a nice compact little spot just within one octave, those four notes. C, E, G. You could also play the open G there. And then B flat, C. All right, and you can keep going up the neck and build this starting from here. C, E, G, and then we can also find the flat seven here, the B flat, and then C. So there we go, two octaves of the arpeggio. All right, now let's supercharge this by taking the five chord forms from the caged method, and we can you know, put those into seventh chords as well. So our C shape looks like this, A, G, just playing a part of that, otherwise you're doing some crazy gymnastics here, then E, and then finally uh, the D shape here. We can attach an arpeggio to each one of those shapes, okay? So it's really coming from the same thing. If we start here, C7 arpeggio would look like this. And then if we move to the A shape, we've got this. The G shape will start from here. The E shape. And 
and then finally the D shape. All right, so that's a one octave form of the arpeggio right next to each of these chord shapes that hopefully you already know. And if you don't, check out some videos that I've got about learning the basics of the cage method and then putting seventh chord voicings to the caged system. Works great and you're playing chords all over the place with that in mind. All right, if you're a premium member, then check out the tab because I've got these shapes for the arpeggio in these five positions tabbed out for you so you can follow along and practice this stuff. Now let's have a whole lot of fun with this by taking a groove based on a C7 chord and I'll play something that sounds a little more like a lead line, like a solo, but only using four notes from the C7 arpeggio. And I'll shift between this shape and this shape, maybe even come up here, we'll have some fun and move around the fretboard, but knowing these arpeggios and attaching them to the chord shapes really kind of gives you this sort of anchor point in your mind for where you're going. So you feel a lot more comfortable because this hopefully is familiar. If not, you gotta get the caged shapes under your fingers. But if you're ready to kind of step out and solo a little bit, it pays big to know the chords that are happening. So if you've got a C7, you know you can kind of visualize this C7, this one, this one, this one, and this one, right? All right, so now let's put this into action. You're gonna hear a C7 bluesy groove, and I'm gonna play a lead line right on top of it using C7 arpeggios and kind of connecting them around the fretboard. All right, the cool thing is that the notes come from the chord, or the chord comes from the notes. However you wanna look at it, there's a one-to-one -one direct relationship between the arpeggio and the chord of the same key and quality like we've seen with a C7 arpeggio and a C7 chord. They're guaranteed to fit, they're guaranteed to sound good. And yet you could bring in a different scale, like say maybe a pentatonic scale or a mixolydian or something like that, and that will give you access to additional tones that will create more colors and some cool stuff for sure. But I really believe that if you're just getting started with jamming and improvising, that you should spend a lot of time focusing on the notes from the chords arpeggio. That's because these are like the waypoints. They're the target tones that again are guaranteed to work. And once you have those ingrained in you, it's so much easier to not get lost on the fretboard and also easier to kind of step out over here and step out over there because whether you veer away, you always know where to come back to in order to fit. So give these arpeggios a real run for their money in your practice session. But let's take this a little bit further. So you've heard a little cool jam just over the C7 chord, but we can also keep this sort of concept alive and kicking when we change chords. Say in a typical blues progression, we've got our one chord, we're going to call that C7, we're going to stick with this as our example. If we move on to the four chord, which is an F7, we change our arpeggio to match the F7. So now we need to start thinking F7 arpeggio. And I've got those mapped out for you as well in the tab for premium members. And then we go one step further to the five chord, which is very much needed in a 12 bar blues progression. And if you know all three sets of arpeggios, just for instance, the C7 arpeggio, the F7 arpeggio, and the G7 arpeggio, you'll be able to play a full 12 bar solo using the arpeggio method and you're gonna sound like you're moving with the music and maybe even leading the music with your solos or lead. Maybe that's why they call it lead, but we wanna to get to that point bring out the notes of the chord that's being played.
Memorizing an arpeggio all over the neck takes time, so make it part of your regular practice routine and stick with one chord type, like for instance the dominant seventh chord, and also stick with one key, like C, and make sure that you can nail that C7 arpeggio all over the neck before adding another chord. Now I highly recommend moving on to the chord that's four notes of the alphabet from where you started. So in our example C, we counted up D, E, F, that was our four chord. Move on to that one next, and then move on to the one that's five tones up the scale, C, D, E, F, G. And once you're super comfortable with the arpeggios all over the neck, for each of those three chords, you've got enough arpeggios in your back pocket to hang with just about any 12 bar blues jam. Now, all of this is infinitely easier if you know the note names of every single note on the fretboard. So download my free guide to learning the fretboard by clicking or tapping right over here and spend a few minutes a day working through the guide to really level up your fretboard knowledge and ultimately to help you play better blues and play the music you love. That's what it's all about. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, practice smart and play on.